Good morning, and welcome to the Electrical and Computer Engineering Capstone Project presentation. I'm Brandon Lyon, an Electrical and Computer Engineering major. I'm here today with my two teammates, Daniel Finan and Ed Magno, two Electrical Engineering majors. We're a team big computer associates. This semester, we've been working on a three-phase motor controller. Um, the first question we had to answer at the beginning of the semester, one that you might currently have, what exactly is a three-phase motor controller? A three-phase motor control, uh, three-phase motor consists of two main parts, stators and rotors. Stators, which receive three offset AC signals, are used for generating magnetic fields. These rotors conduct the rods or poles to react to our magnetic field. By changing which set of stators is currently active, we're able to induce a spinning motion for our motor. So our motor controller monitors many important facets of our project, as well as uh, create these AC signals by utilizing a digital signal processor or DSP for short. Uh, this digital signal processor sends low voltage pulse width modulation signals to these gate drivers. This gate driver then steps up that voltage and uh, is able to power our MOSFETs. The rapid switching of these MOSFETs allows us to control the current and phase of our AC signals, which are sent to the motor, and are used for gener uh, making that spinning motion. Our project has seen many implementations over its life cycle. Uh, first, as an electrically assisted wheelchair, then as a motorized bicycle, and now as a controller for large-scale medical devices. Uh, with these, this new market in mind, we've come up with the following best outcomes and goals that we need to reach. Uh, we would like to produce a higher current output in order to move these larger-scale devices. We would like to implement a position control algorithm in our firmware in order to control the movement of these large devices, as well as create a new board layout in order to optimize space and take up less area with our board. With these goals and best outcomes in mind, we've made the following accomplishments and have the remaining challenges ahead of us. Uh, my firmware accomplishments consist of research and fixed point notation. This is a common practice in digital signal processing, which allows us to cut down from the amount of hardware necessary to do uh, quick and reliable computations, as well as uh, the implementation of a function that converts re uh, revolutions per minute to radians per second. This is useful because setting speed and radians per second is not intuitive to a user and help my understanding of the fixed point notation. Our main firmware challenges consist of a position control for the concept that I'm currently working on in MATLAB. Uh, my technical director, Ben Rich, and I have discussed a more simplified model uh, in comparison to the last year's team's approach uh, and the implementation of that position control algorithm in our firmware. So with position control, we kind of need to analyze the action that we're currently doing, uh, see where we're going, and with this data, take steps to see what we need to slow down, speed up, or what actions we need to take in order to reach our end destination. Last year's team decided that they wanted to use uh, what Ron called no mills. Uh, this function uh, helps you utilize uh, large data points on a, on a graph and you can interpolate future information using this. Uh, this is robust and reliable, but we think it's a little too complex for our more simple position control. Um, after discussing this with Ben Ritchie, we decided to utilize uh, periodic function calls as well as constant acceleration values in order to calculate stopping distance using some kinematics equations, uh, allowing us to have a more simplified model and approach to our position control algorithm. And with that, I'll hand this over to Dan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so as, as Brandon mentioned, part of the best outcome of this project was to increase uh, the output current to the motor. Uh, so this began Evan and I, who are working on the hardware aspect of this project, researching the MOSFET drivers and how they work. Um, on the left here, you can see this graph on the left represents one phase of our three-phase motor controller, which is an H-bridge design, which uses a PWM signal to allow current to flow fully through the motor with no shoot-through current. As you can see, the current flows from the high side, one side, to the low side of the other in a rapid switching motion, which uh, makes no two MOSFETs on one side of the motor on at the same time, which would cause a short between our source and our ground, which would cause a lot of damage to our U-circuit board. Um, so our uh, H-bridge design and PWM technique does not allow for that. Um, so Evan and I's solution to increasing that output current was to redesign uh, the current design with parallel MOSFETs um, which through simulation proves a higher output current to our motor. Um, and th our, this design uh, we put together uh, will be used in the new board layout that we hope to complete by May. In addition to this, we needed to update all of our power supplies to be able to regula regulate more input voltage, 
specifically 12 to 60 volts of unregulated input voltage. So <clears throat> currently, the 3.3 volt power supply on the current design can only regulate up to 40 volts. Um, and as, as stated, we wanted to be able to bump that up to 60 volts while maintaining a maximum level of efficiency. So through research of active market regulators and, and, and implementation, our new design the 3.3 volt power <coughs> supply will be able to regulate that 60 volts um, that we need. And also, as you can see, has an efficiency of about 85%, which is very comparable to the current design. <coughs> I'm now going to turn this over to Evan, who's going to discuss uh, more of the current sensing um, in the project. So after working with Dan on redesigning the MOSFET stage of the circuit board, I am now working on the current sensing portion of the circuit board. Current sensing is exactly what it sounds like. It's essentially, essentially the amount of current going to your load. On the left there, we have low side current sensing. We're sensing the current after it has already passed through the load. Here we have high side current sensing. We're sensing the current before it even gets to the load. So essentially, in either case, you have a very small resistor called a shunt resistor or a sense resistor. Across that is a differential amplifier. In our case, it amplifies the voltage across it. That is sent to the, uh, the board's DSP chip or digital signal processor, which uh, communicates with the gate drivers, which is what send, sends the PWM signals to the MOSFETs, in turn increasing or decreasing the current going to the motor as needed. So our, so our project uses low side current sensing, which is sensing the current after the load. That's typically better for higher current applications such as ours. The existing design features four uh, sensing amplifiers. There's one for each phase, um, and there's also one sensing the total current, so the total combination of all the currents in all three phases, um, each with a sensing resistor and amplifier. If we want to increase the current, this design needs to be changed, and that's my primary goal. This is a simulation I've been working on LT spice just to understand how it's really working. We have a sinusoidal input current. Here's our sensing resistor. Um, this block is an exact model of the op amp that's on the board currently. These resistors are setting the gain, and here we have a voltage offset. Um, so the output voltage will be a sinusoid, and essentially this uh, offset will give the output voltage a DC offset. That's to keep the voltage within the power supply of the op amp from 0 to 3.3 volts. As I said before, if we want to output more current, this design needs to be updated. So the proposed idea that we'll be mostly working on uh, next semester is to add a resistor and an op amp to each phase and also to the bus sensing phase, which measures the total current. So, so you can see one amplifier is connected across a single resistor. The other one is connected across both. So the one that's connected across both will have a higher level that can measure, say, 0 to 200 amps, so the full range. Uh, this second one will measure a smaller range, say 0 to 20 amps. So this smaller range will have a much higher resolution because it's a smaller range. Um, this one will have a lower resolution. So if we mix these two together, it increases our accuracy and be able to assess the current that goes to the motor. So that's it for our presentation. We'd like to thank you all for coming today. We'd like to give a special thanks to our technical directors, Dr. David Verfi, Denise Andreozzi, and Ben Ritchie, for all the help and guidance they've given us throughout the semester. I'd also like to thank Dr. Sunak, the program coordinator, for giving us this tremendous opportunity. And lastly, we'd like to thank all our fellow capstone designers for their hard work this semester. Thank you. Thank you.